Hey everyone, it's Harmon. You've tuned into another episode of Comedy History 101. We have a brand spanking new episode today, an episode that the world needs at this moment. That's right. Today's episode is on the history of Yakov Smirnov. What a country! So, we hope everyone is safe and well. And also, before we jump into the episode, take some time to like, subscribe, and comment on Comedy History 101 wherever you get your podcasts, be it iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, or whatnot. And without further ado... You're stupid. Everybody's so stupid. Good thing about doing comedy in Russia, you have captured the audience. You're stupid. Everybody's so stupid. Comedy History 101. You gotta be very selective, very careful of what jokes you say. If you say, like, take my wife, please, you get home, she's gone. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, oh, yeah. Dear. oh, boy. So, uh, what you heard there was a classic routine by said comedian Yakov Smirnov. I said to myself, what a country. <laughs> And yes, you've tuned into another episode of Comedy History 101. Where we school you in comedy. I, of course, at Harmon Leon with me, as always, Corona Free, Scott Kalanico. Scott, how are you doing? In Russia, how are you doing? Says hello to Harmon. I don't know if that, that didn't make sense. I got too close to the mic too. All right. <laughs> yeah. So Scott, Scott, this this is this is a a a, a comedy history one on one podcast episode. The world needs more than ever. We've been saving this episode. It's been in our archives, and we and we and we we've been talking amongst ourselves, saying there's going to be that moment in history where we need. To pull out one Yakov Smirnov. Yeah. I said to myself, what a country. <laughs> we have reached, we have reached that, We're that there. moment. We've reached we, we are there. Our Pandora's box of comedy. We could okay, so if you if you just heard like up front, we had the comedy history 101 theme song. Um, there are two comedians featured in it. One is uh, Andy Coffin, who we love, and the other of course, featured in the Comedy History 101 theme song, one Dr. Yakov Smirnoff. Yeah. That was, yes, that's, that's he's him. a doctor. Yeah, he is a doctor. Um, so, Scott, when you hear the name Yakov Smirnoff, what comes to mind? What a country, Miller Lite, and big, tall, furry hats. So tell, tell our beloved audience, who, who is, who is Yakov Smirnoff? Well, actually, Harmon, you know, between you and me and our audience, his name isn't really Yakov Smirnov. Oh, his name, yeah, what is his, it? His name is actually Yakov Naumovich Pokis. And he is a Ukrainian um, and now American, Ukrainian-American comedian, actor, and writer from the the uh, state of Ukraine, the uh, Russian state, or, excuse me, the Soviet Union state of Ukraine. He's actually from the city of o- Odessa. Port City and the Black Sea. Oh, right. Uh, my grandparents are from Odessa. So maybe so I wonder. If maybe they all knew each other. <laughs> maybe they did. That kind of ties. Yeah, in. That's like me, me and the guy from Aerosmith being from the same village, dude. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, Steven Tyler. Steven or? Tyler, man. Uh, what, what what's the name of the city? Brindisi. So, no, dude. San Solsti. and his real last. Yeah, name. Yeah, San Solsti. His real last name was Talarico. Mm. And you're Kalanico. Well, my grandma, my great grandmother's last name, maiden name, was Talarico. They have the same, the exact same, exact same last name from the exact same small town. So I'm thinking so, there's something there. Maybe your grandma was putting out. Uh, <laughs> she was. Uh, do we talk for, about my grandma for her grandson? <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> oh god. All right. Uh, so, so Scott, can I say we digressed a bit? Yes, a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> 
So, as we're talking about, uh, Yakov Smirnov, a uh, Ukrainian comedian from, uh, from, from our Soviet Union, where, where in, in, in America you emigrate to country. In Soviet Union, country emigrates to you. <laughs> what a country. I said to myself, what a country. <laughs> So here's, so here's a little thing about, I didn't know about Yakov Smirnov. Uh, he was actually performing stand-up comedy in the Ukraine and came to the United States in 1977 in order to pursue a career in show business. So I believe as a performer uh, back in the former Soviet Union, he was performing at, I guess it would be like almost considered to the Bush Belt here in America on the uh, Black Sea where there's a lot of, uh, you know, kind of resorts and all that. Yeah, he would, actually he was like a, on a couple of cruise ships, and he would just kind of. I think he was kind of a tour guide as well, leading. Because um, back then you had to have a tour guide. Like if you were American, because this is how he said he met a lot of Americans. So like you, mm-hmm. you, you had to take one of the state sponsored tours, you know, and you always had to have your you know guide around. And he was like one of those guys, and so he would meet Americans that way, and they would you know tell him how great the U.S. of A is and freedom. And, how, and he probably and, how, and he how, probably answered he probably answered to them, what a country. <laughs> he probably said, couch doesn't stand behind you. But what's interesting is I think his dad, um, so his dad was kind of an invel- inventor. He was like an engineer and an inventor. And his right. dad, his dad invented. I mean, there was they kind of they immigrated legally. Whiteout? Did he invite Whiteout? No, no, like that was, that Peter Torx's dad. Was the monk, that was the monkey. <laughs> Michael Nesmith. But dad. they okay, yeah. they immigrated legally. Where back in the seventies, mm-hmm. they uh, the Soviet Union and and would exchange wheat for people. But also, they allowed him to go because his dad invented um, this crazy. Um, uh, yeah, here it is. Uh, Pictionary? Pictionary? No, no. His, his dad, his dad invented, a, his dad invented a gadget um, that measured the structural integrity of large blocks of concrete. <laughs> and so apparently, wow. back when he was re- performing in the Ukraine, um, uh-huh. he would take the device on the road and try and tried to and tried to sell it. He was like a, he was like a salesman even back then. Uh, until, until oh, that's kind of funny. Yeah, so he's and, like a traveling salesman yeah. comedian. Until K, until KGB tell him. Don't, when you take device on road, KGB takes you on device. I said to myself, what a country. <laughs> uh, so here's my question is, how much wheat do you think they got for Yakov Smirnoff? I don't know. I just, I do, I do know that they're, 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 uh, Washington Heights, I think they were. He said their, uh, their apartment was $226 a month. Oh, wow. Rent. Holy cow. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, 1977 prices? Yeah. 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 Nobody yeah that's when the city was city. bankrupt. Well, there's discrepancies there because somebody said, at one point I mm-hmm. read it was Lower East Side, and then they said Washington. Right. right so who knows? And so he, how would you describe the humor, the, 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 the comedy persona of one Yakov Smirnoff? Oh, man. How, how wouldn't I? Well, I mean, he was, like, he, he's, he was kind of a proto-Borat, you could say. He was the perpetually bemused... Um, foreigner, foreigner, yeah, yep. wandering around in the in the in the big city. I mean, but but it's great to be in this country. You have freedoms. You know, you can say anything you want. You can do whatever you want. Certain freedoms I had no idea about. I walked in the store first time. I saw this box. It says New Freedom. <laughs> and I said to myself, What a country! What I read is uh, and. This is just summary of what I already know is his humor combined mockery of life under communism and the consumerism of the United States, as well as wordplay caused by misunderstanding American phrases, cultures and all punctuations, followed by the catchphrase. What a country. <laughs> okay, that's Scott, sh- should we tackle a few of these? Oh, like, like, let's 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 do a little uh, Schmirnoff off. Okay, uh, so I'll, I'll do it. Um, I go to New York and I saw a big sign saying, America loves Smirnoff. And I said to myself, what a country. Okay, this is, Smirnoff or a brand of vodka. Yeah, it was going to bother. Okay. Actually, but the funny thing is, is that's where, that is literally where he took his name from. Because he's yep. like one of his first jobs when he got here, he was a bartender in the Catskills. And mm. uh, that's where he decided. Which, was, which is the Borscht Belt. 
comedy of, uh, of America. United States. Yeah, yep. so he's, he's been in Bor- both of the Borscht Belt. Uh, and, and if I can correct you even further, it was uh, uh, the famous uh, resort, I, I think Grosinger's, or, I think it's called. Uh-huh. Yeah, the, the real famous uh, Borscht Belt comedian resort. Where Dirty Dancing was? I think so, yeah. Okay, fair enough. So, Scott, why don't you tackle another right, one we do these? another one. Okay, right. Because this it ties into this. <clears throat> uh, upon being worked as a... Okay, in the joke, uh, Yakov got offered to work as a barman on a graveyard shift, and he remarks, A bar in a cemetery? What a country. Last call. During happy hour, the place must be dead. What a country. <laughs> the first time I went to a restaurant, they asked me, how many in your party? And I said, 600 million. <laughs> at, at, the gro- at the grocery store, they have powdered <laughs> milk, powdered eggs, and baby powder. What a country. And then he has also, you know, another one of his clever joke formulas is comparisons of the U.S. versus the USSR, such as in every country, they make fun of city. In U.S., we make fun of Cleveland. In Russia, we make fun of Cleveland. That's kind of funny. Why why don't we have baseball in Soviet Union? In Soviet Union, no one is safe. (laughs) Uh, and he, and this what a country he, So it's kind of like the fun of uh, Jeff Foxworthy Where you can just end uh, every joke with uh, get her, Or with Larry the Cable Guy Where you can end every joke with Get her done Get her done, yeah You can end it with uh, What a country You know, I like the catchphrase comedians Yeah, what's the, in America you can always find a party In Russia, party always finds you I said to myself, what a country <laughs> Classic, a classic one here you have American Express card. Don't leave home without it. In Russia, we have Russian Express card. Don't leave home. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, the the party joke is actually kind of funny because I, I read a, a an anecdote that he told when, because uh, as I said, when he was kind of a tour guide uh, when he was yep. in Russia doing uh, his uh, tour tours and stuff. And when he moved to the when his family moved to the states, they, the the officials there were asking him. You know, what do you do? And he didn't know how else mm-hmm. to say it. So he, he said he was a party organizer. You know? uh, and yeah, so, yep. you know, so the Americans were like, oh, what? You're coming over here to organize a communist party? Uh, but it was okay. Hey, he's like, no, in Russia, a party organizes <laughs> you. Oh, oh, what a country. Oh, so yeah. the correct pronunciation of the hotel he, he worked at was uh, Grossinger's Hotel okay. in the, in the uh, Catskills. And he actually lived in the employee dormitory. Oh wow! Which is okay. which uh, foreshadows what l- later happens when he has roommates in L.A., which we will get to. Right. But first, so uh, he began doing stand up in the late seventies. Like you mentioned, he he chose the last name Smirnoff because uh, again, it was like a familiar, you know, uh, Russian name that he got from uh, his bartending days. And he started comedy in New York, and then he moved in the early 80s to Los Angeles to pursue his stand-up comedy career. And what? Scott, what? we have what? talked about this on past episodes mm-hmm. of Comedy History 101. Yes. Where did he perform well, when he moved to Los Angeles? Well, mm, hate to have to stop and you answer it And answer it like Jeopardy. <laughs> hate to have to stop you there, but actually he had a pit stop on the way to L.A. Actually, uh, it turned out that Yakov tried his hand working on the cruise ships. He was on the uh, on a, a carnival, I think, I believe it was Carnival. Uh, I, oh, yeah. I, it, might, it might have been Royal Caribbean. He was on one of the big cruise ship lines, and he actually did a cruise as a comedian. Uh, when This is when, before he could speak very well English, and his act consisted mostly of him coming out and dancing Russian dances and telling bad jokes. Um, <laughs> and he was not hired back. For maybe, you know, oh. for the good of history. So that's when he kind of moved on to LA. Yeah, because cruise ships are just Ooh, not country now, dishes. Oh my God. <laughs> disease. Coronavism. Uh. 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 But this is why we, we're, no, this this podcast, this episode today is about escapism. And yeah, it's about corona free. The Co- world. We're, blah, yeah. Good, just rid yourself of the corona. Yeah, we're not. We're not. We're, we're escaping into the uh, the world of Yakov Smirnov. Yeah, no, no social isolate iso- social distancing here, dude. We're all together. Yeah, and so speaking of no social distancing, so 
after the cruise ship <laughs> stance in the 80s, uh, he moved to Los Angeles where he started performing at the legendary Comedy Store, which we have talked about here, most particularly two episodes we, we talked about um, history of Comedy Store. One was the, the, the Comedy Store Strike, mm-hmm. the legendary strike that the changed the face store. of comedy. Yes. And also, uh, which we have talked about, uh, Yakov Smirnoff, in the history of the Comedy Store Condo. Oh, wow. So, Scott, who lived in the Comedy Store Condo? Uh, well, and uh, I'll give you a hint. His name rhymes with Makov Burnoff. <laughs> so, that's right. so that was that was kind of the way when Mitzi uh so um he he as he started his career that he started out as a I get a war to showcase Yakov did at the comedy store and kind of fell under Mitzi's wing Mitzi Shore the uh, manager of the comedy store and as we mentioned in the earlier episodes there was a house that was on this hill that was behind the comedy store that Mitzi also owned and would would occasionally give um some of the comedians uh, let them crash there or live there. And, you know, they could pay rent or what have you. And um, so they, she kind of a rotating cast of characters, people, various comedians going in and out of the house. But some of the most famous ones at the time that we're talking about were none, none other than Andrew Dice Clay and Thomas F. Wilson, which is uh, we people, our listeners will know as Biff from Back to the Future. Uh, they were both roommates of... Um, Yakov. They shared a room within the house, or they all were just roommates with. I don't. The house? Yeah, that's now. I'm kind of wondering that. Um, exactly. Oh, that's a good. That's a good question. I bet now. I bet they must have had their own rooms, dude. There's no way that Andrew Dice. And cried. also, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So also, I think I remember from that episode was Yakov um, when he was a struggling comedian and he lived in the comedy condo or the comedy house. Uh, he was also sort of worked as the electrician at the comedy store. Yeah, he was he was a carpenter. Yeah, yeah. So I think he would fix like the you know electrical things. Yeah, and I believe that he put up a big portrait of himself inside the house that sort of pissed off Andrew Dice Clay <laughs> or to irritate Andrew Dice Clay. Oh, that's sad. You don't want to. You don't. Want I don't know. I mean, if you had to have a roommate, don't you think like a young Yakov Smirnoff would be pretty fun? <laughs> yeah, it would have been. Aw- it would have been awesome, dude. I said to myself, "What a country!" <laughs> so, what, when did when did things start really clicking for uh, Yakov Smirnoff? Uh, well, like uh, many of the other comedians we profile on the show, um, this was kind of a uh, comedian training circuit back in the day. Was the Rodney Dangerfield's Young Comedian Special, and that's kind of how he first kind of broke out, and most of the country had a chance to see him. Our next comedian is from Russia. How do you like that, huh? This guy came here seven years ago, couldn't speak a word of English. Today he speaks 12 words. All Spanish. Yeah, most particularly the ninth annual uh, Rodney Dangerfield Young Comedian Special. Also on that special were the likes of Louis Anderson, Sam Kennison, Rita Rudner, Bob Saget. Wow, okay. And a bunch of people you probably wouldn't know. Uh, that's all. That's always weird. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, but those are those are big heavy hitters. Yeah. So yeah. Sam Kennison got his big break from that special. Yep. It was just back in the days when just one you know comedy special or one appearance on the Tonight Show would you know make your whole career. Yeah. You that's... would have the whole country talking about you the next day. Yeah, it's cra- it's it's crazy because that doesn't it doesn't seem like that happens anymore. So once, so once uh, you know things started rolling for Yakov, where did he start uh, popping up? Well, let's see. So he started uh, his first kind of big break was was that uh, Miller Lite commercial. A lot of people saw that. When I came to America from Russia, I discovered many wonderful things like blue jeans, unopened mail, and light beer from Miller. Yeah. When I tasted this light, I said to myself, "What a country! Light has great taste." Light's also less filling with third less calories than the regular beer. In America, there is plenty of light beer, and you can always find a party. In Russia, party always finds you. <laughs> he, yeah. he was. He was also. He made. Uh, he made a, quite a few movies. Actually, he saw, he was in Moscow on the Hudson, where he was. That was. Uh, I would say that was his uh, first big breakout role. Yeah. That Did Robin we? Williams movie, where Robin Williams played. Uh, do you play a Russian guy? In yeah, that? he was a Russian guy. I think it was a pretty good movie. Okay. I, remember, I saw it in the theater. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Robin Williams was yeah. a Russian who defected inside of like uh, 
um, a department Macy, store. In was New York. it Macy's? Bloomingdale's. I don't know if it was. I think it was Bloomingdale's. Bloomingdale's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and um, yeah, that was it. Was it was a good Paul Mazursky uh, film? So that was one. He was also in um, Brewster's Millions as a taxi driver, uh, The Money Pit with Tom Hanks, and then I didn't know this. He was in Buckaroo Banzai. I don't remember that one. Is, is that a good movie? That's like one of those cult movies. Is that? I remember know? seeing It's that. a Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, Jeff film. Goldman's in there, and I remember seeing it and thinking it was weird and like to go back and watch it again now and see what. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's very culty. So from there, he also appeared on episodes of Night Court as the character Yakov Korolenko. Okay. <laughs> And he also appeared several times on The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson. But what was considered like the pinnacle of his big break is when Sitcom World decided to create a sitcom all around his catchphrase, (laughs) which was a sitcom called... What a well, country. Like country. Yes, exactly. Here, dude, I got I got the tree here. Right, let okay. me let me put it on. <laughs> I was saving I didn't I've seen it. Was it a dude. Baby. Oh yeah. I love here it. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's great. So it's so very cheersy nineteen eighties. Oh wow, yeah, cheers. Okay, a little sepia tone but yeah. with one colorized flag. All okay, right. so I think I have what I'm gonna have. What what is Garrett Brown oh, getting the wow. story? Ah, Gale's. So he, here's here's the weird thing. Are you done? Okay. Oh, oh, oh there's an episode. <laughs> yeah, don't watch, don't watch the thing. Ta- the episode Taylor loses is cool. Yeah, dude. Okay, so, yeah, go ahead, go. So what, what, so what do you so know about the sitcom What a here's Country? Here's the thing, dude. This is actually based like our other shows that we've talked about here and that our viewers have corrected us on. This is based on a British sitcom called My, Mind Your Language. <laughs> hmm. And what was the premise of that? Well, I guess people learning a language in class. I don't know why you would have to base it on that, but it is anyway. Um, and here's the other interesting thing. I remember this too. <laughs> is that a couple, yeah. two more two more bits of trivia? Is that it was syndi- sure. it was syndicated. It was never shown on a major network. Really? Yeah. So it was like. Did you make it past a, a season? I don't. I guess. <laughs> however, they used to do that back in the old timey days, where they like they would make the show and it wouldn't get shown on a network. Um, but here's the other thing. Are you ready for this, Harmon? Are you sitting down over there? Are you ready? Wait, wait. I'm standing up now. No, I'm, okay, let me, let me find a chair. Let me find a chair. Okay, got a chair. I'm sitting down. Okay, so they had a. Let me find out who this person is. Um, um, who that person is anyway so they had the uh, the original uh uh principal on the school who was oh you kids better learn your language anyway the produce the original principal was played by gail strickland but who's that that uh, sounds that's, I, familiar I, that's what i thought too i looked her up i have no idea who that is anyway she was on the first 10 episodes uh to be replaced by you're sitting down because here it comes none yeah, of, okay who? none other than Don Knotts. What? Yes. Is, was Don Knotts just the utility, like, uh, jump the shark guy? Yeah, totally. With the... So that was... Uh... No, wait, this is like a... Oh, my God. <laughs> this is like a whole whole segment in the, the, the hit one-woman show tied up in knots. Yeah, dude, so if you can believe... <laughs> the, the what a country era. <laughs> yeah, so you believe it, at one at one time we had uh, Yakov Smirnoff and Don Knotts Don Knotts together. On, oh my uh, god, that's almost like our episode of Comedy History 101 on fake Charlie Chaplin's where mm-hmm. we had fake Charlie Chaplin uh, doing shtick with Oliver Hardy. <laughs> Two comedy giants. I know, man. Oh, sort of. <laughs> ah, that's, oh, that's so sad, dude. S- yeah, so Scott, you were leading to this. So, okay, things are going good for Yakov Smirnoff. What a country. He's making Miller Lite commercials. He has his own sitcom. Um, he's on The Tonight Show. You know, probably one of the top comedians in the country. He was doing uh, but, bumper cartoon bumpers. Let's not forget that for ABC. Yep, that's right. Uh, but what happened in 1987? Oh, Oh, uh, well, Harmon. Was is that the, it? Was that it? Was what happens? What this happens? Is kind to, of a red uh, What day. happens to an? What happens to an immigrant that comes to America with unable to speak a word of English? Right. What, what? What is the true immigrant journey? 
Well, here it is. With, with the Yakov so, Smirnoff. So, and I have the actual date wait, here. Wait, wait, I'm not sitting down yet. Are you, are okay, you, I have the actual yeah, date yeah, here. Yeah, all right. It yep. was, uh, the historical date was January, for, uh, January 23rd, 1986. And what happened on that day is that uh, Smirnoff was invited to a party hosted by the Washington Times editor-in-chief Arnaud D. Borshkov, Borshkov, which featured Pre- Ronald Reagan as a guest of honor. And Reagan and Smirnoff hit it off immediately because Re- Reagan told Smirnoff a joke. And uh, what was the joke? It was the one about the car. You want to? You want me ah. to paraphrase it? I think you can paraphrase. No, I think it. is it like this? In in America, <laughs> president tells you joke. In Russia, joke. President throws you in jail. <laughs> in Russia, president declares war. Russia on, throws you to gu- gulag. De- declares war on Ukraine. Yeah. <laughs> Um, what, what was the joke? Um, okay. A man, uh, man goes to a car, a man in Russia, man in Soviet Russia goes to a car factory and he says, I'm here for my new car. And the, the factory worker says, sure, here, just si- sign, sign this form. You can pick it up in 20 years from now. And, and, ah. and the guy goes, oh, would that be in the morning or the afternoon? And the factory worker goes, what does it matter? It's 20 years from now. And the car guy goes, because I've got the plumber coming in the morning. Nah. Yeah, it takes 20 years. 20 yeah. years. Yeah. But and then actually a joke. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, because that's kind of based in reality, because uh, uh, Sandy actually has, their pa- her parents still have their, when they went to go order their car and they, they in 1983 and they said it would be ready in 1993 and they still they still have the paperwork apparently oh wow yeah <laughs> that was real and appara- <laughs> apparently a joke that uh Reagan later uh paraphrased from Smirnoff was in Russia if you say take my wife please you come home and she's gone yeah <laughs> it's, a, it's a good joke. Yeah. Like, here's the thing about uh, just a just a side note is that uh, Yaga Smirnov actually had good jokes. I think they're 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 funny jokes. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a little word. You know, I, I I would say you know we like to pretend that ironically we love Yakov Smirnov, uh-huh. but uh, I think back in, the, in if you look back at the old clips, it, it makes you laugh. Yeah, I mean he's funny. He's good on stage, and he and he's funny, and he you know he had his. His point of view and everything, so it was it all worked. I mean, he was doing. In a way, I almost like group him into like a you know he's almost like an Andy Kaufman foreign man with intentionally good jokes in a way. Yeah, he's like a, he's like foreign. <laughs> he's like foreign man, but like for real. Yeah, because yeah. he is a foreign yeah, man. He was <laughs> instead of being foreign man, he was a foreign right, man. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, what happened when Yakov Smirnov was listed by one Dana? Rochbacher. Mm-hmm. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Yes. Um, well, he became a speechwriter for Reagan, more or less. He was kind of Reagan's uh, go-to guy during the last couple of years um, in his office. Um, and Smirnoff was such a valued part of Reagan's team that he became mm-hmm. the featured entertainer during the annual White House Correspondence Center back in uh, 1988. That was that was. A- Did you find? Yep. Uh, that was a Did you find any tape on that? The, I didn't see any tape. I found pictures. Mm-hmm. So there are pictures of that. So it wasn't back in the days where <laughs> where now... It, well, they don't even have comedians at the White House Correspondents' uh, Dinner anymore. <laughs> because of... Uh, and in fact, the president doesn't even come to that. No, that's what I was anymore. just saying. <laughs> kind of an innocent time, you know? During the Obama years, that kind of... I. Have we, oh yeah, we've done we've done the history of the uh, yes, we have. White House correspondent yeah. dinner. So you, yeah, you can check out our past episode of that. Yeah. I mean, I think the heyday of that, and we also interviewed uh, um, uh, David. Uh, what's his name again? The the writer wrote Obama speeches. Oh, the you the David one. Lit. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. We did an episode where he, we interviewed David Lit, who mm-hmm. wrote a uh, joke head joke writer for. For Obama during the correspondent dinner, so yeah, I think with that the heyday was Obama because Obama could take a joke and he would get like good writers like David Litt, you know, writing writing, you know, funny quips for him, and it was all fun. <laughs> and then came just the <laughs> the dark age of Trump. Yeah, <laughs> where we have Sarah's Huckabee Saunders, so just. <laughs> 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 
you, well, you, just a, you know. <laughs> and it's just, yeah, bad. just anyone who can't, that's just her when, uh, <laughs> you know, Michelle Wolf was, <laughs> you know, making jokes, you know, and yeah. she couldn't take a joke and just had a scowled. I don't yeah. find that funny. Yeah. But no, but, but, but back in the day when Yakov was, uh, you know, hosting the dinner for Reagan, I guess. I bet the quips were uh, flying high. Fast even and though furious. I caught, no, you know our our disdain for Reagan. <laughs> no, uh, I can't find any video as of yet. But we do have some pictures, and we'll put those up at. Uh, you'll be able to see those at. This is the president over at uh, scottclonco dot com slash president, and also we'll give uh, we'll give Harmon a picture. Or we'll give us a picture as well. We'll put it over at Comedy History One Hundred and One. You can see these pictures of Yakov Smirnoff and Ron Reagan live yeah. together. Uh, I don't know. I don't know his, what jokes he did, but maybe he was doing, uh, in America, you have war on drugs. But in Russia, <laughs> drugs has war on you. <laughs> in America, you just say no. And no. In Russia, no just says you. <laughs> oh, boy. So, so, Scott, tell us about this Ben Stiller skit. Well, see, here's the thing. Before before we even get to there, Harmon, you, we got to s- talk about um, kind of a turning point in mm. in Yakov's career. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, can I set you up because I know where you're going on with this one? Well, I mean, it was okay. Let's say you're a comedian, right? And your whole act <laughs> yeah. is based on living in a repressed regime. Uh-huh. Yeah. Something happens in 1989. Yep. The, the the fall of communism. Yes. What happens to your act? Uh, not good. So it becomes dated <laughs> immediately. Um, yeah. So this kind of all his act kind of started falling apart to the point where, like around, so the fall of Soviet Union was he kind of limped along between 89 and 91, and then in 91 there was the fall, <laughs> fall of the Soviet Union. So, um, so immediately in 1992, uh, Smirnoff made the number one spot on the David Letterman show where they where they talked about um, the the top points of the fall of <laughs> fall of communism that ended Yakov Smirnoff's career, and then also. Um, Ben Stiller poked a little. Uh, ben Stiller, excuse me. Ben Stiller poked a little fun at him on his uh, the uh, Ben Stiller show. He loves to make people laugh almost as much as he loves his freedom. HBO presents the Last Stand of Yakov Smirnov. Thank you. you know, since Soviet Union broke up, people say I have nothing to joke about. Well, I say there's always Albania. <laughs> The Iron Curtain's lifted, and Yakov's on his own. In former Soviet Union, used to be pretty bad. We had no freedom. Now, we have freedom. Pretty crazy, huh? What a sovereignty of independent states. I love it! The Soviet Union's gone, but Yakov is as funny as ever. Oh, a defector. <laughs> Yeah, things are pretty bad in China now, you know. Which was like the former Soviet Union used to be. Communist. Did I ever tell you I'm part Chinese on my mother's side? Whenever I go to visit relatives in China, we eat, and then an hour later, we want freedom. (laughs) It's the last stand of Yakov Smirnov coming this fall. Funny thing about that clip where he starts doing Russian dancing, yeah. I think that was part of the real Yakov's yeah. early oh, yeah. act. He he couldn't speak English well, and he yeah. would, there'd be a big section where he would just do Russian dancing. Yeah. Um, and apparently Ben Stiller's kind of apologized for that that bit. Do Yakov? Uh, just I think in general in the press, I think he might have. Why did Why did he apologize? I don't know. He said he thought it, it, he he was hoping it wasn't too mean. I don't I don't think it's mean. I mean, it's just kind of. You know, it's just you make you make your whole career based on this one thing, and then it it yeah. goes away. So it wasn't like so, personal or anything. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay. So okay. Let's say you know. So the the wall came down, and uh, the Soviet Union broke up. And was that it? Was that the last we heard of Yakov Smirnov? Oh no, Harmon. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, let's did, did he rise like the phoenix? And where did that phoenix rise to? Well, that phoenix rose to not the actual phoenix, but the the midwestern equivalent of phoenix, which is known as Branson, Missouri. Uh, this started, I think, it's, I believe it was around 1992 or 93. 1993. 93, yeah. So uh, that was the year he was kind of making this comeback because also um, that same year, uh, Shmirnoff did, um, he did the Just for Laughs Festival in Montreal mm-hmm. and came out and literally had no um, Russia jokes in his entire act. Right. He's just talking about it. Right here, let me, let me just put a second of it on just a Thank you very much. Hi. Hi, my name is Yakov Smirnov. As you know, I'm originally from Russia. And uh, now I'm married to an American woman. Anybody? Um, ah, I anybody get where he's going with this. Okay. Do you need to watch it? Do you need to hear it? I mean, the whole, the whole thing's like that. So it's kind of interesting the way that like, he had Oregon. started switching around. And that, that same year. Kind of like year. Dylan going electric. Yeah. That's that same year he did. Uh, Yakov Smirnov goes all relationship yeah, jokes. Yeah, exactly. So that same year he did um, lie. Uh, no, Farm Aid um, in the Midwest mm-hmm. somewhere, and Willie Nelson was there. And Willie Nelson saw his act, and Willie told Yakov, he was like, "Dude, if you need to go anywhere, go to Branson. Everybody will get you there." So he did. <laughs> And not only did he, but he also opened his own. He also opened his own theater, the Yakov Smirnoff Theater, a two thousand seat theater in Branson, Missouri. Yeah, well, he started out just kind of renting other people's, you know, um, stages when they, Venues? When, yeah, when they when they had t- some time off, and then he decided at the end because he, he thought it was just going to be um, uh, temporary. He didn't think he was going to be there forever, but he just went. And you've been to Branson, right? I've driven around. Yes, I, I've seen the theater, dude. I stopped in the parking lot. It was closed. It was closed that day. Yeah, it's a weird ass. It city. is. I was, dude. I was there in February. It was. Really... I was there in January. Okay, yeah. I was there in so, February as well. Yeah. <laughs> so we've seen it during the off. I've never seen it. I'd like to go back and see it when it's normal. Yeah. So there's no bars. There's no bars in Branson. Like we went and saw the, the most patriotic show we could find. You know. Where the backdrop was just American flags and firemen and uh-huh. 9-11 and shit. Yeah. And there's this country, you know, um, acapella group. And there's no bars in the theater. Oh, that's sad. It's what you do. But uh, uh, footnote, we found the one hotel bar where the locals go to. Okay. And a local told us the, 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 so Branson, very Christian, very right wing, very family oriented. Right. A local told us the underbelly of that is Nazis and meth. Oh yeah, of course. Well, that's that's um, <laughs> that's Missouri, dude. Because it's all it's only about twenty, I think twenty minutes from Harrison, Arkansas, which is the headquarters of the Ku Klux Klan. Ah, okay, excellent. Yeah, and I was there because we were. I was doing a book called uh, uh, National Lampoon's Road Trip USA, right. and I plotted to go both to Harrison and Branson. Because that, the premise of the book was I had to go to a road trip to the worst places in America. Oh, that's horrible, dude. Yeah, so we got Branson, we got Ku Klux Klan headquarters during the day, and at night we got Branson, Missouri. <laughs> right, <yeah. laughs> Aw, that's nice. I said to myself, what a country. <laughs> So uh, I guess that's it. I guess we wrap up uh, nope. the the, no, the history of no, Yakov Smirnoff. Unless there's Scott, no, not, is there is there anything else of his career? Well, Harmon, 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 Harmon. No, you mean no. the career of Doctor Yakov Smirnoff? But before we even get there, if we before we even get there, uh, after the um, so Harm, uh, so Yakov uh, was sworn in as an American citizen in 1986. Uh, on the Statue of Liberty. So that was like the year they reopened the Statue of Liberty after they refurbished it. Um, so right. he was there. He saw the skyline of Manhattan when he was getting sworn in as an American citizen. So he was very moved by the uh, September 11th attacks um, in New York City. Uh, moved to the point where he kind of spent his a time, raised a bunch of money, and he painted a, mur- a mural that hung over Ground Zero, which you could find. You can find online. We'll we'll put it in the article as well on Comedy History One Hundred and One. But it's a big. I'm oh yeah, because was that another thing when back in uh, Russia he was an art teacher? Yeah, he was an art teacher. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. All right. So there's a big old heart wrapped in an American flag. Um, 
sitting at ground zero. So you can see that. We'll see that on. We'll have that in the article on Comedy History 101. You can see that there. So after that, then he started doing a. Uh, he appeared in Broadway in a one man show called "As Long as We Should." What a country! We both, <laughs> as long as we both shall laugh. And and Hartman, he was a feature writer for AARP magazine. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he got his <clears throat> he got his master's degree in psychology uh, from the University of Pennsylvania in May 2006. Uh, he taught classes um, at Drury University in, and Missouri State University and finally got his doctorate in psychology and global leadership at, from Pepperdine in May, just this last year, dude, May 18th, 2019. Wow, yeah. Doctor, doctor. Here, here. Yeah. I think, I think pretty impressive guy. Oh, kind of yeah. just had a lot of trajectory courses mm-hmm. and now he's a doctor. Yeah, but you what got, a country! Yeah, well, he t- he talks about that when he changed when you know when when the Soviet Union collapsed and his whole you know career kind of yeah well, he was th- at that time he was like you know he just bought a new house in Los Angeles and stuff and he had two mm-hmm. kids and it's just like imagine you know now yeah you're, and your then whole career yeah he said that all his bookings would cancel on him that you know he's supposed to play Vegas and they're like yeah we don't need you anymore. <laughs> But anyway, just pretty impressive guy, I would say. Oh, and, yeah. you know, any any other takeaways on Dr. Yakov Smirnoff? Do you want me to give a takeaway? Do you want takeaway to give me? <laughs> takeaway you, yeah. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> but any no, any takeaways? Really. No, I mean that's pretty. That's pretty. I guess the takeaway would be like, man, you gotta be. It's like now, if I could say this, the C V word. It's just you know when when someone when life hands you lemons, you gotta like you gotta pick up yourself up by the pants and and make your own freedom. You know, you gotta head for the border. You gotta like say what a country to life. Here, here. Yeah. Every story has a second act, and Yakov Smirnoff. Had a second act as Dr. Yakov Smirnoff. Damn straight, dude. So with that, I think it's time to... Oh, wait. Oh, wait. 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 wait, No. (laughs) No. No? Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll see if we can put this in there. Um, So apparently, I I was listening to a podcast with him, and apparently, when they in the commercial, (laughs) so so at the Yakov Smirnoff Theater in Branson, I think showtime is 415 I think. Yeah. And then they, they serve dinner and then they make a big deal out of um you get uh real linen napkins with your dinner. It's like a dinner theater. Oh wow. Yeah, apparently that's in that's in the commercial they have for the Yakka. They they trumpet the fact that you get to, to eat with real linen napkins. So we'll see if we can dig one of those up on YouTube some point. Oh my. Yeah. That's yeah, I guess that, that sounds all right. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> He doesn't like real linen napkins, dude. You get your chicken and mashed potatoes and Yakov Smirnoff, man. And just just uh, etymology, a uh, little trivia. Uh, the word napkin, uh, it used to be tablecloths, used to be called naps. Uh, people would wipe their hands, so they made smaller ones. Uh, thus the word napkin, like as in kinder. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, it's time to... Plug away! Scott, what upcoming live events do you have to plug? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, as we as we mentioned, we do have our short uh, documentary, uh, Betrayal, will be premiering kind of at, at the uh, Tribeca Film Festival. I don't know. They might have – they're going to have a press and industry screening, and then they might – put them online i'm not really sure south by southwest did that and they actually people have probably seen those films more than if they would actually just go oh wow well yeah because everyone in the country could see it yeah yeah yeah. so who knows um what they should do they should just do the zoom method where it's like you screen it for the first time as a premiere at a certain hour you know and then it's almost like you know here's the unveiling on this day at this time oh that's a good yeah they could do that I'm not sure. But, I don't yeah, know sure there's a know. lot of learning curves, and I don't, I don't know, know if they're the going to log- listen to me. I don't know yeah. what the logistics involved. Involved. So that's what we got going on. And then also, as you know, Harmon and I do another his no, do another podcast called "This Is the President," which you can find over uh, wherever you find your favorite podcast. And the other thing, now that we everyone has so much time, we're putting some videos. We're putting lots and lots of videos up there on "This Is the President" on the YouTube channel. So head over to YouTube tube channel. Head over to the YouTube's. Do a quick search for This is the President. You'll find us. Come watch some videos. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment, as Harmon likes to say. Um, And that's about me, Harmon. What about you? 
Ah, uh, yeah. So, okay. So we've taken all the former live shows we've done and we're moving them online. Tonight, Friday, March 27th, 8 p.m. on your computer. That's right. I'll be <laughs> streaming my live show, Tale, which I have rebranded for the streaming live show version, Streamy Tale. It'll feature New York's finest storytellers. So check that out. You can go to my site, uh, harmanleon.com, to find out the exact time. So next Wednesday, April 1st, I'll be I'll be streaming and hosting my live show, Jokey Oki, oh stand-up God. comedy, oh karaoke, in a three-round game show. And guess what? Guess what Berlin resident will be on hand oh my God, to me. assist in Jokey Oki? Dr. Scott. Yes, Dr. Scott will be on hand. So both myself and Scott, you can find out again uh, information on the show at my site, harmanleon.com. Mm -hmm. And so these are two events to help us get through these crazy ass shit show of a time. But we brought the shows online to, uh, and you know, that's where it is. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what we're doing now. But Harmon, I'm gonna leave everybody on an up note. So I did a yeah. I did a little. No, it is up note. It's Jokey Okey, dude. I, I did I did. It's oh, sorry. But still on an up note. Um, I did a little research and I did manage to find the uh, the, the commercial for Yakov's Dinner Adventure. And I wasn't able to listen oh. to it, but it does end yeah. with, end with him in a big Russian fur hat holding a plate of food. So, oh. <laughs> well, nice. you can the find, one with the napkins. Yeah, yeah, you'll be able to see that. That'll be over on our our site, uh, comedyhistory one hundred one dot com. You'll see it right there. We'll put we'll put we put Yakov's mural. We'll put him in a fur hat with linen napkins. That'll all be there. Here, here, and once again, thanks a lot for tuning in to Comedy History One Hundred One. <laughs> Where we school you in comedy. Now that we have heaps of free time on our hands, I do believe we'll be back next week with a brand spanking new episode. Take some time to like, subscribe, and comment on Comedy History 101 wherever you get your podcast, be it iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, etc., etc. And thanks a lot for tuning in and bye bye. Bye bye. You're stupid. Everybody's so stupid. Good thing about doing comedy in Russia, you have captured the audience. You're stupid. Everybody's so stupid. Comedy History 101.